All right, my friends, it's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And we have a manifesting mama on the show this morning, my friends. Uh, she manifested being on the show. We're going to hear that story here in a second. She's a hairstylist that's built a thriving online business through one thing, my friends. It starts with a P. <laughs> Get your head out of the gutters. Perseverance, my friends. Perseverance. I think about things like pee pee poo poo because I got a two year old at home. So excuse my mind being in the gutter. Daniela, welcome to the show. Hi. How are I'm you? I'm so freaking excited to be here. Awesome. I'm glad that you're here as well. And and tell everybody where you're calling in from. I am from Long Island, New York. So I'm probably about two out uh, an hour and a half west of the Hamptons. Mm. Um so about two hours, uh, an hour and a half east of New York City. Did you just crash Michael Rubin's big white party up in the Hamptons? On I the, did on not. July? You I'm didn't, not, you didn't get the invite? Kids weren't invited, so I oh. couldn't make it. That's I didn't one. get the invite either. I guess I'm not <laughs> as much of a celebrity as, is as, as, well, I don't think I am. But, uh, you others, definitely are. You are others, a celebrity. Well, others tend to be. And I think you're going to, you're a, either a future or a current celebrity here. What has this been like for you so far to, to get um, some momentum going in this in this uh, little deal here, and uh, what what led you? What were you looking for when you found us? So, like I was telling Joanne before, I had started from through M M uh, Walcott, Walcott yeah. and I was just my mindless scroll through the TikTok world, and, a scroll and she just really resonated with me, and I messaged her back and forth for probably about a week because there were some like reservations like this can't, you know, she's exaggerating. Like there's no, way. um, I think which most of us think and I just did it. And like I was telling Joanne before, when I saw your face come onto that screen, I said, this, this is it. This is the guy. This is what I'm doing. You. Okay. And I was all in every morning. I put my kids on that bus and I pretended like I was taking a college course mm. and I just completely focused and engaged. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I told my husband, I'm going to be on that show. I'm going mm. to be on that show. This is what I'm doing. And this is going to work. And I don't care how long it takes me, but it happened. And I swore I wouldn't reach out to you because I know there's that form that, you know, if you want to be a guest on the show, nope, I'm not doing it. They are going to message me. And it happened. Wow. Yes. Wow. And here oh, I am. Manifest, manifestation is real, right? I mean, I speaking wanna... things into existence, right? Yeah. And there were days, trust me, like there were days where I'm like, you know what? Screw this. Screw it. Yeah. I can't even. So I had a TikTok that I actually, I hate to even admit this, but like I paid for like, you know, ads to like boost your engagement and it happened all really quickly for me. Like I was up to almost like, I don't know, 5,000 followers mm -hmm. and I was so excited and I was doing great. And I kind of like, wasn't even trying to move myself on Instagram because I, I thought TikTok was the end all be all. I thought that everyone was on TikTok and everyone wanted to be, and then they banned me and I'm like, these sons of bees, like. I just paid, you know, 200 and whatever dollars on ads and they're going to ban me. So now, you know, I'm like texting. Like, like your 200 is anything but a freckle on the pimple of a nap yeah, to them. Yeah. But we think we're like, oh, I'll, I'll take my $200 and add somewhere else. Right? Yeah. Like whatever. <laughs> How dare you? So now I'm at a wedding when I get this text message that I'm banned and I'm like, who do I call? China? Like, who do I, who do I call? Who do I call? So my husband's like, what's the matter? I'm like, I just got banned on TikTok. It's over. Like, this is over. So I picked up the pieces and I was like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm not quit. Like, I'm not. And I went on Instagram and I'm like, this is my main focus right now. And, you know, I have to say everything happens for a reason because I didn't get that personal, like, you know, connection with those people on TikTok. I feel like TikTok is very much entertainment you know people do it's just a scroll yeah i'm interested and then you never hear from them again mm -hmm. on instagram you know you really do connect with people you know it's easier to message them it's easier yeah. to you know send a voice recording that's more personal yeah. um so i feel like that was when i really just went 
TikTok's like all the boyfriends you you had, and then Instagram's more like your husband, right? You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. More, um, you know, you take it more seriously. Yes. It's just more like more there's serious. more substance there. You treat it with more respect. You feel like it treats you with more respect. Where TikTok's just kind of like that call. You know what I mean? It is it's kind of like that dating scene. You know, you might you might lose a limb. You might you know yeah. you might you, there might be some bloodshed. You know, you might lose the whole damn thing and have yeah. to start over. Yeah. You know? It's true. And like, I felt like I was going to have to start twerking and like doing like a little like dance, like, like in order to just like get a view. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Like, oh, you weren't prepared to I go have there. Kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my, my daughter's friends would follow me on right. TikTok and be like, your mom's so hot. Like, and I, and she was like, you got to get off of there. You got to get off of there. And so it was better that the chips fell the way that they fell. So how does it feel to be, I mean, your friend said you were so hot. So how does it feel to be though noticed, not by children, but noticed <laughs> by noticed by strangers for value and for things, you know, the value that you're delivering out there. And let's, it started on TikTok, but now it's over on Instagram more for you now. What's it like to, go from being skeptical and must be BSing, you know, to, to then you being in the chair of, of, you know, delivering value and being seen and heard and appreciated and valued by people out there in the market, but complete strangers, by the yeah, way, complete strangers. It is so freaking inspiring and it's so flattering and it makes me feel so good. Not even from like, just when someone like looks at you and says, Oh my God, like, you know, there's people that don't comment, that don't like, that don't follow. And I would get a DM like, I watch every single one of your videos and you are so inspiring and you have made me like want to do this. Mm -hmm. And that is the best compliment anyone could ever get. And those are the messages that keep me going and like make every single video better. Because when I started doing videos, I, I look back, I had to delete some of them because I'm like, this is not good to be on here. But like, I was like complete statue, one clip, like I didn't even, you know, you know how you like, you do like five different clips and it's like segments. This was like, right, right, straight, right. like, hi, my name is Daniela. I am a digital marketer. And I like was a, like, like a science project in like fifth a, grade like an AI robot, like crazy. <laughs> and um, now I look at my videos and just seeing how far I've come mm. from like February 7th was my first video. And wow. now like I get so many comments, like I love your energy. I love like what you bring to the table, your knowledge. Yeah. I was, that is the best compliment. Yeah. I mean, and and I like I love that because obviously the 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 comment about your looks are coming from children, but yeah, at that, the end of the, nothing. At the end of the day, um ugly people go go crazily viral. Um crazy. You, you know, a skinny it doesn't, matter what you look like. it doesn't matter what you look like. No. It doesn't matter at all. And quite frankly, you could be the hottest person in the world and and other Down people may see you like that. But you may not see yourself like that, Correct. right? So it doesn't even matter. Like doesn't for the, matter. and I'm speaking to the audience right now mostly because you 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 are you are absolutely going to critique and criticize yourself. No matter how, you're never going to look good enough for you on camera. Your voice is never going to sound like I think your voice is amazing, but Thank you me. may not like your voice. I hated right? my voice, but now sometimes yeah. like I'll hear a clip, I'm like, oh, that's like a really cool voice. Like, but, yeah, you know, you start to love yourself more. Great. Wow. So say yeah. more, say more about that. T talk to us about that, uh, that evolution for you from February to now of 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 seeing the growth in yourself and also embracing more of your personality versus being that kind of like you know robot person how is that, what helped you to do that was it the feedback from other people that you were blown away by and you were like okay i'm going to give myself permission to g open up a little bit more and yeah. get a little bit more of my personality out there a little bit it was a little bit of that it was a little bit of time and growing and I'm a hairdresser so I have like the gift of gab to begin with and I just start you know I know so many other people talk about this and it's so true you know it takes time to be comfortable 
with putting your real self out there and being able to like be natural. And mm. I think that when you first start recording yourself, it feels weird because you're not talking to anybody. You're just like, you know, I would hide, you know, so many of my videos are in my closet because I would hide from my entire family. Right. And I was so embarrassed even for them to hear me because they're like, what are you doing in there? And I would be like, you know, so it's, it, it's time, it's time and just getting better and growing and like watching other people and seeing, you know, other people still inspire me. You know, there's a yeah. ton of people that I follow that I'm like, Oh my God, like, you know, and Someone said to me, like, people look at you and they wish they could be where you're at, you know, so it's like a pecking order kind of thing. Like, you know, someone's here, you're here, you're here, you're here. And the people down here want to be here where you are. I want to be where those people are. So it's kind of just building. Not just even in terms of money, right? But just in terms of embracing their message and being yeah, themselves, their knowledge, and being their... confident and being yes. knowledgeable, right? Yes. It's like, because you actually, as much as, you know, people flash their results, whether it be in the make money online niche or the health niche or whatever, the truth is you don't really know, but you mm-hmm. can tell by the way that their their presence is, yes. their the energy. Authentic, the authentic, authenticity. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I want you to say more about the family thing because look, the truth is, is that you're, you're right. And you can't see the people that you're ultimately marketing to and that are watching your videos. In, in a way, it's easier to do videos than do public speaking because you're, because the audience is not standing right there and you don't, you know, you can edit things and you can take a break and you can take a breath and, but the family beginning to record in front of family, or I can remember just when I started holding up the phone and recording myself in public places and having just strangers, but to be able to see them was difficult. I felt stupid. Like a jackass. Right? I felt like a jackass. I yeah. felt like do, why, like like I I looked like I was acting like I was like cooler or better yes. than people or whatever. Yes. Um, talk talk us through that and where you were, where you are now, because that is one of the most common things, and a lot of people don't even realize that's kind of holding them back. Mm-hmm. That they're not so much afraid or ashamed or embarrassed to like put stuff out there. It's actually getting comfortable filming and doing your thing in your own home, in your own environment and wherever you are actually recording at. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're always so scared of being judged. I think that, you know, I I just did a video on this a couple of days ago. There are like two types of people in this world. There are the people that see other people doing things and succeeding. And they're like, Oh my God, like that is amazing. And then there's other people that are like, what is this girl doing? Like, what does she think? She's going to be like some kind of like millionaire, like, you know, influencer. Yeah. And so I think we're scared of being judged by those kinds of people that we kind of just like hide somewhere to do it away from people. And then we start to build that confidence. And then you're like, and then you see like that it's really working and you're making a difference and you're helping all these people that the people that are in like our real world, you're like, I don't care. Like, I don't care. Like I would be at the salon and I would like set up my phone and like doing videos and people would be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm like, just doing something. Like, And then I would like go into the waxing room and like finish the video. So, but now I'm like, I don't care. I'll put that shit on the front desk and I'm like, you know, whatever. I don't care. Like, but I, it took me time to build that confidence. And now, you know what? My, my kids will be like, oh, you're doing a video. Okay. Let me know, you know, when you're done. Like, so it just becomes easier. It becomes Mm -hmm. easier to be yourself and it becomes easier to not care what people think. And if you want to think that this isn't real and this doesn't work, then that's fine. That's your opinion. But there's more people that are so interested in what it is I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And that is what really matters. You know what? They don't pay, the people that are haters and bashers and trolls and they don't pay my bills. They don't they don't matter to me. Mm-hmm. You know, all that matters to me is like my family and how proud they are of me and you know, my husband was so super excited that he's like my biggest fan and he's overseas right now. So it's so hard for us to talk, but, um, we were able to talk and just like seeing how proud of my, my family is of me, my mom, my dad, my sister-in-law is like, 
that's what matters. That's and all the really... people that I'm inspiring on my page. Yeah. Yeah. You really realize after a while that people will adjust to how bought in you are to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So if, if their comment knocks you off and, and makes you suddenly withdraw mm -hmm. and, and become like, you know, shame, shame based or embarrassed or whatever, then they will, they will react and, mm -hmm. and also feel those feelings of embarrassment for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas, whereas if they ask and you're like, yeah, I'm filming a video, give me a minute. Like yeah. it doesn't even require like the less you explain the better because confident people don't go around explaining themselves to everybody. Right. Exactly. So they actually, if you're like, yeah, I'm filming a video, I'll be right with you. Or, um, if this doesn't work for me. I need you to go outside, like start speaking to people directly, mm -hmm. not mean, say what you mean, mean what you say. Don't be mean when you say it is the rule I've always lived by. Yeah. But if you're like, ah, this doesn't work for me. I need you to just give me a minute and step out of the room while I finish this video. And, and you start to, or people are like, what are you doing? It's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm filming a marketing video. Yeah. And people you know, a lot of people don't understand it. And I think that that's a big thing because they just don't understand it. So it's confusing to them. Right. Right. And, so in, in what they don't understand, they often judge or, yes. you know, just yes. if, if they don't, if people don't understand it, they may have a tendency to feel dumb yep. and then project that onto you. Exactly. Like there's something that you're doing that's exactly. stupid because I don't understand it. Yeah, exactly. So it's easier to just bash someone because yeah. they don't understand it rather than get the information for themselves and they'll be like, huh. But I've seen such a turnaround with those people that didn't understand. Now that I'm starting to see success, now they want to know, you mm -hmm. know, now they, they're interested you know, so many messages I'm getting are, you know what, let me, tell me, tell me what it is you're doing. Like I'm, I'm open ears now, yeah. you know, when you're not seeing success and you're not making money yet, and you're not seeing those leads yet, it's hard to like give an argument as to like, okay, well, what am I doing? Right. But then, right. Because you're like, what am I pissing in the wind? Like, what am I doing? Like, right, right, right. then you start to see those leads and those like relationships build and the successes. And you're like, now I want to talk about it. Right. Yeah, now yeah. I want to tell you everything because my, the knowledge that I've gained in these five short months is insane. Like, I feel like I could talk about this for forever. This, yeah. is, all, this is all I want to talk about. Um, that's great that your your husband um, uh, is is so supportive and your family. Your whole, and by the way, thank you and your whole family for your service. I mean, Damn. just this this goes to show how um, what what military families have to go through and sacrifice not only putting their lives on the line but also being away from each other. Sounds like like that's that's really really something that. Um, is 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 must be difficult but um it's so nice to hear that you guys are 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 uh, so supportive of each other yeah. and that he's cheering you on in this way um so do you have specific goals what are you and your husband's kind of goals or how have your goals in your vision for your future changed or evolved now that you have gotten traction here and can hopefully start to see a brighter future. What changes do you want to make? What would you like to be doing in a couple of years? Um, and maybe what have even your husband and you talked about in terms of, um, you know, potential possibilities that are opening up? How have you elevated your goals? So my husband has always been, he's always carried us, you know, like I was a hairdresser, but when I, you know, started having kids, you know, I could only work one day here, one day there. Um, mm -hmm. he's also a fireman. He's FDNY in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, he took a the best leave. What America has to offer right here, people. Yes. And he took a leave to, he was always national guard. Um, but he would like report to the base out in West Hampton once a month for drill weekend. And then they offered him a position in special operations. So he took a five year leave from the fire department and, um, he wanted to do this. And you know what? This has always been his dream. Mm. And even though he carried us like financially, like I always supported him because it's what he wanted to do it, since he was a little kid. Like he wanted to be in a helicopter and mm. I supported that. So, you know, as much as he serves, I serve too, because I held right. it down here. 
while he held it down there. And like, it kind of just works for us. But this deployment has been super hard, I think, because my kids are a little bit older. When they were babies, they didn't understand. They didn't have a conception of time. They didn't mm. have that emotional, like, oh, my God, I miss my dad. And now that they're a little bit older, it's it's getting more difficult because they do understand how long he's gone. And they do understand. And he's such a huge part of their life. Like, he runs circles around me, like, as far as, like, he does the sports, he does that. So he is, like, a constant presence. It's not like he goes to work, comes home, lays on the couch. And so they do miss him because he's yeah. a huge part. So I'm mom, dad. And so my goal is to retire this man from mm -hmm. the military so he never has to leave us again. Yep. Oh. I wish I had a hat because I would throw it down, too. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, that is my I'm, goal. Sure, I'm sure he feels equally about you in terms of you carrying the family and carrying the babies and carrying the, the, the emotional load and, and filling those shoes when, when he's not there. He um, does. He always you know. says like, you are like 80% of this, like yeah. you serve more than I do because what you do at home with them, I, it's never going to be discounted. Like I know how much you do. It's hard, like wrangling. Yeah four feral children in the yeah, summer four, like, really? Holy yeah God. four daughters oh wow four daughters yes and they're wow. crazy. a girl dad times four yes. wow yeah. five women in the house or four guys so yeah. you know he's a good man like oh, you know God. he's a good man oh my god he's yeah. the best the he's best, the best. Of what we have to offer in this country by far there's no doubt about that and i can i can see how that would be a powerful motivation a powerful why a why that would make you cry right? I, I feel like i'm on like the verge of tears right now because i feel like he is so selfless and he like where i would run away he runs into yeah. so that takes a special kind of person you know with fire and being in the military yeah. um that that takes a certain kind of person because I don't think I could ever do that. I know. So what I'm doing here, I feel like is nothing compared to what he is doing. So yeah. when I think of my why, I think of, I'm going to get this man home with us. Mm. And it's not about the money and it's not about being, you know, rich and having all these nice things. And it's about, he's worked so hard for so many years and I want to bring him home, you know, yeah. for his kids, for us, for yeah. For his safety. For him, right. His safety. Yeah. I mean, just to be around. It's, it's, risk um, it. it's like, what's the, you know, even if you went back to the fire department, it's like, right. What's the lesser of two evils? Oh, right? I know. I you know. know. I mean, I'm thinking about a lot of different things right now. It's yeah. like, and what the, 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 the New York fire department firemen have gone through, been through, seen over the last yeah. decade or so. I mean, it's not been, yeah. we've all been traumatized by, by what they've gone through yeah. and what they've seen. Um, so um, this is this is this is something that I hope is helping everybody else tap into, you know, what is driving you, what is behind why you want to do what you want. It, and, you. it really does. It just keeps pushing you like I'm going to do this. And again, it's like part of that manifestation. You know, if you really do believe that this could be you and you really do believe like I could have all these things. You know, you put it out into the universe and it comes to you. Mm. It does. I mean, I know it's a, it's a hard, hard thing to do, mm. but I've seen it happen over and over and over again. Um, I, a couple months ago when the whole TikTok thing happened and I got booted off of TikTok, things were just like not good for me, I feel like. But it showed in my content. It showed in, and people pick up on that. Like you're not as energetic. You're not as like, you don't have that spark. And you know, you can go into a bad place and then you're like, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting, no one's messaging me. No one. And then you keep getting a constant stream of nothing because in your mind, that's what you're putting out there. Yeah. So I laid in bed one night and I said, I want, send me a white feather, send me a white feather to know that this is still working. I prayed for it. I mm -hmm. asked for it. And I found three within the next two weeks, one on my front porch, one on my sweater, and then one on the floor in my foyer. Mm. And that's when it all started to pick up for me again, because I'm like, you know what? This is real. I have to start attracting a mm. better positive attitude. And then 
Wouldn't you know? It all yeah. started to pick up again. That's so, powerful. It is powerful. It is powerful. I mean, I have read this. I, I watch, I still watch your, I watch every podcast. I watch all of your stuff. I still watch your videos, the mindset videos, because yeah. it keeps you here. Instead, when you want to fall down here, it yeah. brings you back up to here. Yeah. And it, it, you just keep pushing. And you, and the way to get that, my friends, is um, I love the just praying or meditating and, and speaking things, whether it be, you know, to God, to the universe, to yeah. your own subconscious. It's, it's also about, as we talk about on the show a lot, it's about speaking those things into existence, declaring them to other people and out loud. Um, mm -hmm. It's one thing for what we say and pray to ourselves and to and quietly, <coughs> even though prayers can be loud, most people yeah. believe. Um, but man, when when we start saying it out loud, it's even louder, right? It's even more powerful because now we're taking those six thousand or so thoughts that we have per day that our brain automatically makes whether we like it or not and we're then taking one out and saying this is i'm going to hang my hat on this one with you and i'm going to hang my hat on this one with you and now i'm going to take you know i may be talking to you have you know 500 thoughts that come into my head things that i think about from what you say things that come up for me as i'm talking but what comes out of my mouth is ultimately what i prioritize what my belief system is is and also what i'm looking to attract what i'm yeah. what, what you know it's the bait that i'm putting out into the universe or the earth and so you know i have to be really careful about what i say and what I ask for, and um, it can feel silly. Yeah, speaking positively. Delusional. Out. It can. Delusional. It can feel. It can feel. You know, especially if you're so used. And I have seen so many people who are addicted to being on the pity pot. I mean, it is a default, and it, it's in all of us. It's yeah. in all of us. It's in yeah. me too. I I have a a a a inkling or a a a piece of my makeup that that it's there if I want to take that soundtrack off the shelf and mm -hmm. play it in any situation. I could play the pity pot song, the poor me song, Everyone the victim has. stance song. But it's about what I say I'm going to do and then ultimately what I do. And I always say this, I learned this in recovery when I was trying to get clean from heroin. You can't think yourself into a new way of acting. Mm -hmm. You have to act yourself into a new way of thinking. If you act, even if you don't believe it, if you behave a certain way, say, for example, like a millionaire, even if you feel stupid, if you film videos like you have a million followers, right? Let's bring it practical to what we're doing. If you film your videos like you have a million followers, how, how much more of a chance do you think you have to attract a million followers if you're filming your videos as if you mm -hmm. have a million followers versus as if you have the two that you have a thousand percent more yeah and that's exactly what i did that is the big secret of how i became successful was i never acted like where i was at i never acted like acted where I as if at. you already had it exactly yes exactly and that's yes. the whole damn secret to the whole damn thing Yes. Uh, it's not about being arrogant, being an asshole. It's not about being a know-it-all. It's not about going in, in lying or, or, or even faking it till I make it because that implies that I have to lie. Mm -hmm. It's about how I act. It's my yes. energy. It's yeah. my posture. It's yeah. not even what I say. It's how I say it. I mean, I went to a Tony Robbins event because love, love him. Tony. Love him. I can't remember a single thing he said. But I'll tell you <laughs> what, that man moved around the room like a fucking god. Yes. Like a Greek a messiah. God. Yes. I mean, he was boosh, whoosh. Yeah. Just boom, boom, jumping up in the air. And I can just, I'll never get that vision, that image of how he carried his shoulders, how he moved around the room. Again, I cannot remember a single thing that he said, but he the way you. that he moved yes. moved me. Yes. And 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 not even trying to be like a dick here. Like when I watched your videos for the first time, that's how I felt. I felt moved and I felt encouraged and I felt like this is it. 
Like this is this is where I'm going. This is this is the direction that I'm going, and that's what pushed me to do all this. And well, because it's all I had. It's all I had when I started this. I was a heroin addict trying to get clean. I had about a year clean when I got into this. I I had no degrees. I had a criminal record from my drug addiction. I mean, just DUIs, possession of marijuana, ran from the cops once. Uh, I couldn't get a job here in Florida, right? I mean, because I had to put Fallon on my thing. I had all these odds stacked again, no degrees, no letters behind my name, no work experience, right? So I had literally none of the other shit that most of the time I see gets in people's way. Mm-hmm. We, when we have so many of these, this work experience, these credentials, all of these accomplishments that we've already made in life, sometimes we think that we're supposed to be further along in a new venture than we are. Yes. And so we feel stupid being new at things, yeah. right? And yeah. it's hard for us to get humble enough to be new at something. Yes. Right. And, and that's, so- a t- that's a great direction to go in because that was like my number one thing. I had to stop comparing myself to other people in this business because, you know, you hear like, I made this in X amount of weeks. I did this. I had this amount of followers. And it's like, okay, well, why is it not happening to me? Why can't I get that amount? Why haven't I made that much money? Why have, and, you know, Oprah has a quote that she says that the minute you stop, the minute you are running and you stop to look over at the person next to you is the person is the, the time where it's all over for you because you're comparing yourself to that person. And in that one millisecond, they're going to run faster than you and they're going to beat you out. So mm-hmm. you have to stay in your own lane and block everything. You know, I don't like unfollow people, not because I didn't love them and love their content and love everything that they were putting out, but because it, it put me in a bad place. Like it was soul crushing to me, like to see, you know, I started with Chelsea who is up to 1.7 million. Like we started the same week and I want, and like, I am so happy for her. That is absolutely amazing what this woman has done. But then, you know, you see me putting along, you know, (laughs) and, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, how the heck, like what? So, you know, I had to like stay in my own lane, stay focused. And my, my journey, my success, my timeline is going to be different. And and I yeah. had to accept that and I had to still keep pushing. So yeah. I, I, I think that's a huge like piece of advice to stay in your own lane and not compare yourself to other people. Yeah. Because it could be soul crushing. And you're right. I mean, I, have done that myself. Yeah. I mean, unfollowed people. I mean, I do that every day anyways. I mean, <laughs> I go through a couple of, I go through like for like every few months or so, like I'll go and just clear out my inbox, unsubscribe from everything that is not absolutely totally necessary. I will, uh, every time I pick up social media, if I'm in one of these modes, if I'm just finding myself in a scroll hole, I will, um, I will, I will just unfollow people. And as I'm scrolling, I'll unfollow to try to clean up my timeline. My friends, there's nothing wrong with uh, going in and resetting what you're taking in. Uh, it, It doesn't mean that you're resetting your business. It doesn't mean that you're resetting where you're at. It's, it's that you're clearing out. One of the first assignments I give people in the blueprints is a metaphorical assignment with a practical, simple starting step, which is to clean out your wallet. But the intention is, is to begin to get in the practice of clearing out the clutter and clearing out the noise. Because if you wake up to everybody else's agenda every day, meaning that if you, the first thing you do, and come on, let's be honest, let's not try to hold ourselves to some, I wake up in the morning, do 30 minutes of meditation. I wake up in the morning like a fucking, like a, like a, like a wild man, my son screaming in his crib. (laughs) You know, I wake up in a panic attack in the morning and, and my day is off to the races, baby. It's yeah. there's no time for meditation. I roll over in the morning and my prayer is, please, God, help me not buck this day up today. I mean, that's, that's all I have time to say. And so, you know, if I'm if I'm checking my email while I'm having my coffee 
And I've got 50 other people's agendas that came in throughout the night. And I'm opening that shit, trying to follow their links and mm -hmm. to see what the yeah. hell they're doing. Then guess what? I'm on their agenda. Exactly. I'm not on mine. Exactly. And that's what I was doing. I was like clicking on people's landing pages and being like, oh my God, like my landing page doesn't look like that. Let me go in there and like fix this up. And then I would subscribe to an email and then I would get that first email and be like, oh my God, my email's like not even as great as that email. Like I should definitely go in and try to fix that email. So and then you just screw yourself all up and then you start questioning yourself and your own personality. Like those emails that I originally made, that was from my heart. That was from what I was putting out there. Now I'm looking at someone else's emails that came from them and I want to put it in mine, but that's not me. So yes, like it, you can get definitely screwed up by doing that. So how did you decide what like niche you were going to go in, what you were going to be promoting? Everybody always asks that. They, they I think, overcome. Let's just, let me say this. Not that we all overcomplicate every damn thing. So how did you simplify what you were going to do enough, at least for now, that you could get started? Okay, so I have like a terrible case of like adult ADD and I was all over the place. Like I was like, I'm doing beauty, I'm doing health, I'm doing pets, I'm, I'm doing all of it. I'm gonna do everything. I made 14 domains and I was like, whoa, let's like dial it down a little bit. And I was getting lost in, well, because you know, I am in the beauty industry. So that seemed like the easiest thing for me. Like, I, right. you know, hair tools, beauty products, makeup, all of those things. And then I said, you know what? I think that so many people, I don't want to be like an influencer. I don't want to sit on camera and like do my makeup. Be like this mascara is so great. Like, I feel like that's just something I do like on autopilot anyway. Like, I don't know if I could actually, you know, make a living out of it. If that makes any sense, like being in the salon, like I'm always constantly selling myself there. So it just seemed like a lot. And then I realized like how many people are struggling in this world, how many people are having a hard time paying their bills. Inflation has completely skyrocketed through the roof where people like can't even afford groceries. And I really wanted to go into the making money online niche. I felt like I was so passionate about it um, just because I, you know, I, we all, we all see the hit from the economy and like what it's done. And I feel like I really wanted to give moms like myself an opportunity and a way to make money online. I mean, how many of us, our moms have kids, our husbands are working, we're home, we're scrolling, we're, you know, mindlessly, why not make money from it? Mm. Like that really just like resonated with me. And yeah. I love it. I absolutely like, it's just like where my heart is, mm. you know, all those other things. Like I love hair. I love doing hair, but I love doing hair and those things there mm. home. I want to be home and like doing something else that I'm passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that with all the expertise, it's, you know, more about hair and beauty uh, or have, let me say it this way, you've forgotten more about hair and beauty than most people know, right? Because it is your career. Because there I do a, it every day, yeah. There is a chance that in the future, as as you gain more knowledge, as, you, as you're as you able to, I got my shades here. One of the things that we do here at Legendary is we give you the marketing shades. So Ooh. it's like now all of a sudden, when you go through our curriculum, you go through the challenge, you go through you know, whatever the blueprints, if you can or want to, you, you now see the world differently. It's like, Oh wait, hold on a second. I see how I can take my knowledge in beauty and hair and do something that maybe I might be passionate about. And you may not have seen that in month one or six, you may find that in month 18, if you choose to do that. And I think that's one of the things that we all also have to remember is that when I'm choosing a niche, when I'm choosing to get started, my commitment in my, my, my commitment to doing whatever I'm doing needs to be a hundred percent, but I'm not married to that particular product or that niche for the rest of my life. You're not, nobody comes and says, do you 
take this lawfully wedded niche <laughs> to be your, you know what I mean? In sickness and in health. In sickness and in yeah. health. Even if you never make a single dime, yeah. you're committed to this niche for the rest of your life. Are, do you do you feel the freedom and flexibility of this evolving as well? Well, I want to add something to that because I feel like as I went through this journey, it's like made me realize that being a hairdresser and now starting marketing, I feel like even though they're two separate, different careers, they're so much the same because as a hairdresser, I'm selling myself to the client, right? Yeah. They're coming to me for a problem and I'm giving them a solution to their problem. I can't get my hair to go this way. So I'm making them trust me by saying, you know what, we're going to do this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and that goes with, you know, selling them products like this hair serum, this would be great for the problem that you're having. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then when I would see like dark days, not even dark days, but like where days where I would be like in like a little bit of a slump, I would remember how long it took me to become successful in being a hairdresser. Mm. So overnight successes like don't always happen. They happen sometimes if you're lucky. Like I, when I first started out doing hair, I waited like two years for a chair, you know, and I saw people move up and people move up and I was still at the sink, like, let me wash your hair again, you know, like, but then it and then it all happened, and now I see where I am as a hairdresser and how much knowledge and you know confidence I've gained in that field. And now, wow. like you know, I'm amazing. I'm here, but you know, it took me 20 years to get there. So yeah. again, everyone's journey is different. So when I think about like my marketing career now, it's the same thing. It's like I'm I started here, and it might take me 20 years to get here, but I'll get there. Mm -hmm. I will get there if I put in the time and I have patience and the perseverance. Yeah. And I had to do the same thing or my, my father did. And then I, I, I gave it my best shot, but I was a real ass. I, I would always go out on estimates. I would, <laughs> I would get injured. Uh, uh, like purposely? You know, no, no. Oh. <laughs> like, like, like clumsily, yeah. um, you know, we'd go out on a construction estimate, you know, cause that's what you do in construction. You go out and give free estimates. You, you that's, you know, people don't realize they say, I'm going to be a carpenter. I'm going to be a plumber. No, it does not matter. You make the, a beautiful point, a powerful point. You are in sales and yeah. marketing. You're marketing yourself. Why. You can be the best damn plumber. You can be the best, you know, carpenter. You can be the best contractor. But if you get on that job, and one of the funny, funnier injuries that I had was I was I was I was uh, going out to meet this investor one time, and he was showing me this single family house that needed to be done, and, and the garage door was stuck, and and I'm like, oh, I'll get it, you know. Here I am, like this 24, five year old kid. I'm like, oh, let me let me have a look at it, right? I go over there, I I touch it, I pull down a thing that I didn't know what I was doing. I pulled down the garage door comes slamming down. I try to go and grab it and catch it. And it cuts my hand to the point to where my, I, the guy had to take me to the emergency room. Oh I had to God. get in the man's car. Who is this guy? <laughs> to take me to, he dropped me off. He's like, good luck, dude. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like, yeah. Hope, hope that heals up for you. You know, but I, I did not realize that I, I had to be in sales and marketing. It, it You have to sell yourself. You have to close that deal. Even if you're going to job interviews, a lot of us think we're, you know, just going to go into engineering or going to go into accounting. You know, corporate America is even worse because you got to sell yourself over and over and over again all the time because there's people who want your job, yeah. right? So embracing sales and marketing and realizing that I can have the greatest product or even the best skill in the world, but if I can't continuously um, demonstrate value, right? If I can't show people that I can help them by actually helping them first, that's mm -hmm. the key. If I can't show people that I can help them when they hire me, when they give me money, when they buy something from me, by helping them first in demonstrating that value when they sit in the chair, when they walk into the salon, or when I walk into their home and I'm looking at their cabinets, if I can't show them a vision, if I can't show them or help them up front before I actually get hired to help them, 
I'm going to be a very poor man. And my but father listen, and I were poor in construction. But listen, you could give, in, in my perspective, you you can give the shittiest haircut someone's ever got, but if they like you, they will stay with you for the next 25 years. And you've seen that probably in the because salon. Because they oh, yeah. like you. Yeah. They don't give a shit what their hair looks like. They connect with you. You yeah. you mesh, you get, you know, you get each other. And that's that comes in marketing too. Yeah. Someone needs to connect with you. They need to, they need to like you. They need to like your personality, resonate from where you come from. And, you know, there's times that like I've done another client from someone else. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this girl's hair? And she's like, I just couldn't get to her, but I love her. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like what? All right. Like whatever. So that really goes to show that it's not about the haircut. It's not about, but it's about the way you make them feel. It's about the way they feel when they're in your chair, the yeah. way the, your, your conversation is. So yeah. It's, it's so much personality. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And all of you have personality and all of you have value Different. and all of you have, yeah, your own unique yeah. brand and flavor. Yeah. And uh, the reason why I know that is because every single person, when you get comfortable with them or they get comfortable with you, they open up. Yeah. They begin to be themselves, yes. right? And so it, the sooner that we can drop down those walls and realize that we're really the only ones that are holding ourselves back by doing all the things that you've said so, you know, hilariously and powerfully yeah. today, which yeah. is criticizing ourselves or yeah. being embarrassed in front of our family or, you know, uh, valuing other people's opinions as if they're paying our mortgage or something. The quicker we can let all of that go and realize that this is a relationship between me and a potential client. Mm -hmm. This is a relationship between me and myself. And this is about me stepping into, beginning to step into my power and my potential. The, the potential that I know that I have, the potential that I've been being told my whole life that I have. But because of my own fear, because of my own insecurities, or maybe because of what I've believed about other people, what they've said about me, I've taken on their limiting beliefs. I have held myself back mm -hmm. and it is time to cut the chains and let myself live the life that I deserve. And we've talked a little bit about um, some of the, the benefits of, of doing this. How, how are you evolving your happiness and your fulfillment and your excitement through this? Whereas maybe in your long career, that may have become a little bit stagnant. For those who are feeling not, who haven't yet felt that fulfillment, that happiness, and who are not having fun yet, are you having fun doing this? I'm having so much fun. I'm having so much fun. And I'm have, and when you help your first person, I think that's when it like takes off. Like when you see that you've changed someone else's life, that inspires you so much to just keep having more fun because genuinely like that is what gives me like such great like happiness is helping other people mm -hmm. find what i have found and you could do it too you could do this too and i think that when someone is inspired by you and like takes the leap to like take it to the next level that is what makes this all for me i think I think that's really my, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like what makes me truly happy in doing this? It's, again, it's not about the money. It's about seeing other people being so excited about this, which was where I was when I started. Like mm -hmm. I signed on that day and I was so excited and I love to see other people feel that excitement. Yeah. And that's what makes it so much fun. So speaking of that, what advice would you give yourself when you first started that you needed to hear that you know now? What would you say to Daniela? What, what if you know you could sit her down back in February, or whenever, when you were full of more doubt, full of more skepticism, weren't really sure? What advice would you give that Daniela that you know I now say, because it's been some time? You need to have patience. You need to not get so easily discouraged when you have two views on your video. You need to show up every day, which is what I did. I showed up every day, whether I got two views, whether I got one follower, um, keep showing up, be confident, stay in your own lane, 
Don't compare yourself to other people. Believe that this is going to happen to you when it is your time, because that's really, it's all about when it's your time. Like I watch, I love Steve Harvey. Like I think that he is so inspiring and I listen to his, you know, little excerpts on Instagram all the time. And I would say, you know, make sure to take 15 minutes out of your day every day to watch inspiring, empowering videos like that, because that, you know, just like you, like, this man was homeless, like he was living in a car. And he said, God, if you just please let me do this one, I will tell the world that it was you who, oh. who, who made me make it. And I feel like you just need to, the, the patience and the perseverance is, is what is really so important. And I always bring myself back. And I always look at where I came from to where I am now. Even though it's only five months, I've come so far so always looking back to day, that day one and mm -hmm. to now, that's enough to just like keep me going and put me in that good space. Well, I think you gave a lot of people a reason or a few this morning to keep going to. This has been fun. This has been great. an amazing, the best experience. And I better be back on here when I hit diamond. <laughs> you will, girlfriend. You will. Yeah. Um, my best, our best to yeah. you, your entire family, your husband. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for your service and your thank family you. service. And of course, pass our best on to him um, that thank he gets you. home safe. Thank you for getting me here, getting me. This was such an amazing experience and I will manifest much more. Yes, you will. All right, Danielle. Have a we'll great talk day. Later. Stay legendary. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right, my friends, go and follow Daniela on Instagram at Ella the Affiliate. And that's E L L A the Affiliate at Ella the Affiliate. You can find her over there on Instagram. Go from there, lift her up. Woo, boy, she'll lift you up right back. My friends, it is Monday. And that is a fantastic way to start the day, start the week, um, and you know, finish the month strong. Okay, we still have so much time to make 2023 the best year, the most productive year, the year that you made a big decision, had a big defining moment in your life where you said, hey, you know what? I'm going to take back the reins of my life. I'm going to take the bull by the horns, and I am going to take the wheel and drive into the place and where I want to go. And I'm going to take my family with me. And even if they don't understand it at first, and, and even if I feel embarrassed at first, I'm going to push through those feelings just like Daniela did. My friends, that was a wonderful episode. If you're just tuning in, re-listen to that one. Go and find us over on the podcast as well. We've got everything uploaded on you know all your favorite podcast platforms, at least I think. They're at least on iTunes and, and, and Apple and, and all those all those nice platforms. Of course, the replays are right here on this page. You can find over 700 of them. We even upload them to YouTube. You don't have to look that far, though. Right here, if you're watching us right now, they're all right down here on this page. And so there's plenty of inspiration and stories for you to listen to. If you want lots of different examples, you can find them here. Again, there's 700 uh, episodes or more of people from all different walks of life taking our core four business models and using them in lots of different ways. And uh, now the only thing that's missing is you taking them and you using them for your own benefit and to push your life further. You can do this. You got this. Be legendary. Get out of here. Talk to you later, my friends. Peace.